This is a getting started tutorial on how to use the L298 in motor driver and control the forward, left, right and reverse movement. In this tutorial you will also learn how to use the pulse width modulation to control the speed of a DC motor. In this episode we will cover number 1 robot parts assembling number 2 L298 and motor driver pinout and explanation. Number 3. Interfacing. Number 4. Programming and finally number 5. Testing. Let's get started. The components used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. This is the L298 in dual H-bridge motor driver. This motor driver can be used to control DC motors that have voltages between 5 and 35 volts with a peak current of up to 2 amps. As this is a dual H-bridge motor driver, it can be used to control the speed and direction of two DC motors both at the same time. Now let's take a closer look at the pinout of the L298N module. This module has three terminal blocks. This terminal block will be used for motor A and this is clearly labeled with OUT1 and OUT2. This is where we connect the two wires of the DC motor. 
this terminal block will be used for motor B and is clearly labeled with OUT3 and OUT4. While this terminal block is labeled with 12 volt ground and plus 5 volt. The 12 volt terminal is used to supply the voltage to the DC motors. This voltage can be from 5 to 35 volts. The ground terminal is connected with the ground of the external power supply and is also connected with the ground of the controller board which in my case is Arduino board which is based on the 80 mega 328 microcontroller while the plus 5 volt terminal will be connected with the Arduino's 5 volt. As you can see this motor driver also have some male headers and are clearly labeled with ENA, N1, N2, N3, N4 and ENB. The ENA and ENB are used to enable both the motors. Jumper capes means that both the motors are enabled by default and the motors will rotate at maximum speed. If the jumper capes are removed and the ENA and ENB pins are connected with the PWM pins of the Arduino, the motor's speed can be controlled using the pulse width modulation, which I will explain in the programming. The N1 and N2 pins are used for controlling the direction of motor A while the N3 and N4 are used to control the direction of motor B. Now let's start interfacing. First of all, fix the motor driver and Arduino. Connect the red wire of the left motor with OUT1. Now connect the black wire of the left motor with OUT2. Connect the red wire of the right motor with OUT3. Now connect the black wire of the right motor with OUT4. These are the two wires coming from the battery holder. Now connect the red wire with the plus 12 volt terminal. Connect the black wire with the ground terminal. And also connect the ground terminal with the Arduino's ground. Now connect the plus 5 volt terminal of the motor driver with the Arduino's 5 volt. Now remove the jumper capes and connect two jumper wires with the ENA and ENB pins. Connect ENA with pin number 5 of the Arduino which is the PWM pin and connect the ENB pin with pin number 6 which is also a PWM pin. Now connect jumper wires with N1, N2, N3 and N4. Connect N1 with pin number 8. Connect N2 with pin number 9. Connect N3 with pin number 10. And connect N4 with pin number 11. So we are done with the interfacing and now let's control the motors forward, left, right and reverse movement and also control the speed of the DC motors. The purpose of this program is to explain how to control the forward, left, right and reverse movement of the motors using L298N motor driver. 
integer ENA is equal to 5. The ENA pin of the motor driver is connected with pin number 5 of the Arduino, which is the PWM pin. Integer ENB is equal to 6. The ENB pin of the motor driver is connected with pin number 6 of the Arduino, which is also a PWM pin. In 1, in 2, in 3, and in 4 pins of the motor driver are connected with pins 8, 9, 10, and 11 of the Arduino. Set all the pins is output using the pin mode function. Set the maximum speed using the analog write function. 255 means the motors will rotate at maximum speed. Then starts a while loop function. First we turn off both the motors and use a delay of 1 second. For the forward movement we send a high signal to N1 and N4 and send low signal to N2 and N3 and use a delay of 2 seconds and then again turn off both the motors. For the left movement we send a high signal to N4 and send a low signal to the other pins and again turn off both the motors. For the right movement we send a high signal to N1 and send a low signal to the other pins and again turn off both the motors. While for the reverse movement we send high signals to pins N2 and N3 and send low signals to N1 and N4. I have already uploaded this program. Let's watch this in action. I removed the 5 volt jumper cape as I'm supplying the 5 volts from the Arduino. I also disconnected the device from the battery holder and connected a DC female power jack for the testing. I will use a 12 volt adapter. Now let's modify the code and use a variable resistor to control the speed of a DC motor. Pins connections are exactly the same as explained. This time I defined another pin for the variable resistor. The variable resistor is connected with the analog pin A1 of the Arduino and defined a variable of the type integer to hold the value of the variable resistor. SC pin is set as input then starts a while loop function. M speed is equal to analog read SC. Reads the variable resistor and store the value in a variable M speed. Then using the MAP function we limit the minimum and maximum value to 0 and 255 and then send this value to ENA and ENB to control the speed of DC motors. Right now I'm controlling the speed of only one DC motor as you can see only in one is high. I've already uploaded this program let's watch this in action. I connected the middle leg of the variable resistor with the analog pin A1 of the Arduino and connected the remaining two legs of the variable resistor with 3.3 volt and Arduino. While the rest of the connections remains the same. In this episode I covered only the basics while in my upcoming tutorials I'll make different versions of the same robot. I will control the same robot using Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, wireless joystick, radio frequency based remote controlling, hand gesture, ultrasonic sensor, infrared sensor and so on. Make sure you subscribe right now so that you never miss any of my upcoming tutorials. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.